now, Brawlers, it is time for another thought-provoking, slightly terrifying session of Q&A. You asked me questions, I'm going to give you answers, and I need more questions. You can ask questions down in the comment section of wherever you're viewing this in social media, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, wherever. Ask me your questions. It can be about board games, obviously, but they can be about anything. Ask me anything. I will read every single one of them. I can't promise I'll answer all of them in a timely fashion, but I read them all. I save them all. Maybe in the future, your question will be read and answered, and you will probably be totally offended by it, but I am totally not responsible. You have been warned. <laughs> this is also the only video series on my channel where you can see me hold index cards for the entire length of the video. Isn't that great? You're just not going to get that kind of excitement anywhere else. Uh, so let's get the business out of the way first and foremost. I won't keep you in suspense. We have another contest, as you probably saw indicated in the title of the video. I'm not promising how often I'm going to do these contests, but we have one now, so I hope that you enjoy it. This one is for Machi Koro. This is a brand new sealed copy of the American edition of uh, Machi Koro from IDW Publishing and Pandasaurus Games, who has the greatest, greatest logo and name of any board game company. I'm calling it right now. And they make Yido, which is also incredibly awesome. But anyways, Machi Koro is a very fun game. I just reviewed it last week. I worried about the fact that there seems to be only one really winning strategy, to which most people said, shut up, it's not supposed to be that complicated. And those people are probably right, and I'm probably wrong. It's still a very, very fun, charming game. I can't wait for the expansion, which I hope fixes that problem that I have a little bit. But anyways, this would be a wonderful part of your collection. If you're someone that really likes my channel, I think that you will like this game because it's right up my alley and probably up yours as well. This does include the bonus Mega Gaming Store cards. I'm not sure how widespread those are, how many copies of the game include those with it, but if you don't want to find out, win this copy and make sure that you have them. Now, I'm going to try, I want to try to have a little bit of fun with this, but try to keep it simple as well. So if you just want to enter the contest and get one entry, simply email me at boardgamebrawl at gmail.com, put in the subject line Machi Koro Contest, and you will get, and then in the subjects or in the text, say whatever you want. I want to enter the contest. You will get one entry in the contest no matter what. But if you want one extra entry in the contest, and which could be significant, we had a lot of people who respond to the, the Walkstar contest, but not a ton. So one extra entry could be a pretty significant deal. If you want an extra entry, here's what you have to do. In the, uh, the text of the email, you have to name three anime series that have been depicted on the shirts that I've worn throughout all of my videos and my appearances on the Dice Tower, all of that different stuff. Three anime series, that's all you need to name. I was thinking about it and I probably worn shirts that featured at least eight to 10 in different anime series. So you have a lot to choose from. I only need three. It doesn't matter if it's like a strict representation of the character or if it's like sort of a comical depiction, like a parody of that character, those all count. Name three series, you get one extra entry into the contest. I will read off the uh, the winner of the contest next week. Obviously I'm late with this video, so I don't know if it's gonna be Sunday or Monday, but get your entries in. I would say no later than Sunday afternoon, and you'll be guaranteed to be entered into the contest. This is open internationally, but I'm only gonna pay for the first $12 of shipping if that's the case, we'll have to work that out. And this game is available kind almost worldwide. There's at least eight different versions of this game in eight different countries, probably something like that. So you, you probably have a version of this game somewhere close to where you live. So don't fret too much if you can't pay the shipping and you can't win the contest because it is getting to be pretty widespread at this point. Um, other pieces of business real quick, please pledge to us on Patreon. It's a really cool thing that um, the winner of our last contest pointed out in our last Q&A show uh, where you can actually pledge as, uh, a subscription rate of your choosing monthly in order to support projects that you love. And if you do that, there's some really cool stuff. I think if you pledge at the $5 level, you, we do a, we're going to do a monthly Google Hangout starting next month. Um, and just like an hour session where we just like, you know, shoot the stuff and talk about stuff, you know, board game related or not. Or if you pledge at the $10 level, I'm going to try to do a monthly gaming session. I don't know the logistics of that, but maybe we'll do something simple like the Resistance or Werewolf, but it could be a lot of fun. I want to see as many people as possible get involved with that. So, so and, and there's also a pledge level if you are a Kickstarter project creator or anyone with a new game that you want to, or a new company or whatever it might be, or gaming project that you want to see promoted on my show, on um, the weekly Q and A's, and maybe wherever else I can try to fit it in on social media, there's a pledge level for that as well. So a lot simpler and easier, more streamlined than Kickstarter. It's a really neat idea and I'm glad I found it. 
Last but not least, then we'll get on to the questions and answers, I swear. The Extra Life 24-Hour Gaming Marathon is going to be this Saturday, the 25th. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're playing games for 24 hours straight from 8 a.m. to 8 a.m. Saturday to Sunday in order to raise money for the Children's Miracle Network and the Miami Children's Hospital in particular. Please consider making a charitable donation to our page uh, for the Team Board Game Brawl. I'm going to have the link down in the comment section. Anything you give would really, really help. I, I, you know, we have fun gaming, and I definitely want to do the 24-hour marathon no matter what. But it, it, I really, the incentive to do it is that I'm helping out a charity and helping out kids in need. So please, uh, you know, pay it forward. Have, uh, or I don't know if that's the right phrase, but <laughs> help us out and don't consider donating to our team. Also, I'm gonna try my absolute best to simulcast the 24-hour gaming marathon. I have, I don't know if my equipment's gonna be up to the, the task. I'm gonna try my absolute best to at least get our table up there. Um, and if I can do it, I want to know what games you want to see us play. Comment down in the comment section of wherever you're watching this. Let us know the games you'd like to see us play. If I have it in my collection, we'll certainly give it a shot if it gets enough votes. So let us know. Now, on to business. We have questions. And we got some, a lot of good ones. I'm only going to answer three here in the per, uh, in, uh, because of time. But here we go. Jonathan Gauthier wants to know about all the different Asian games that I import. I have, certainly have been getting a lot of those lately from Japan, from Taiwan. And he wants to know, uh, is there a big language, uh, a big uh, uh, difficulty in getting past the language barrier for some of these games? Uh, do I speak another language in order to help that out? How does my gaming group feel about that? And the truth is, most of these games don't have a big language barrier for me, especially games from Japan uh, and Taiwan, where they uh, specifically premiere them at Essen because of that, at, at Essen Spiel. Because of that, many of the games and uh, the components are bilingual, especially card games from Japan brand and from Seiji Kanai in particular, because they are, um, because most people at, at the Essen Spiel Fair uh, speak English. Like most people tell you, don't worry about going to Essen if you don't speak German, because most of the Germans speak English. So, um, and you know, it's, you know, one of the world's biggest languages that you know, they say that if, uh, what is it, if you speak, it's something like there's some old joke that if you only speak one language you're American so that's it so most people other countries speak two languages and a lot of those people speak English so I haven't had too much of a problem with that some card games require paste ups which some very kind people on board game geek create so that you sleeve the cards and put a little paste up to cover up the foreign language box with an English translation box and that works pretty well as far as um, do I speak another language? No. I don't speak another language, so that would be uh, tough for me if I didn't have those resources and if they didn't make the games this way. So I've been lucky in that regard, but thank you very much, Jonathan. It's a really interesting question. Okay. Robin Goldberg, who, in the interest of full disclosure, is uh, in my game group. She's my friend and also my ex-girlfriend, but um, she wrote a ton of really cool questions. She should have definitely put them out there sparingly, uh, <laughs> but maybe someone wants to steal them and attribute them to themselves so that I don't have to read a question from Robin every single week, but all of her questions were really, really good, and I had trouble picking just one, but I thought this one, this one was pretty interesting because it's sort of a hot topic along, uh, among a lot of different board gaming podcasts and vloggers as well, and that is, uh, what do you think about paying a little bit more at a friendly local gaming store to buy a game as opposed to paying cheaper prices online? Um, is it better to support your FLGS, your friendly local gaming store. And this is a very uh, hot topic and very controversial. I mean, it's not a new topic. I mean, internet, buying board games online has been around for as long as the internet has been around and it's probably always been a little bit cheaper that way. But we're, so that's not new, but it is new that board games are hitting such a, uh, a popular, uh, hitting its apex, well, hopefully not apex, but it's definitely hotter than it's ever been. The board gaming, the modern board gaming industry in general, so this issue is coming more and more to the forefront. And here's what I think, just to keep it quick. If you want, if you have the income and you have the wherewithal and you have a great store near you with a good selection or that can order games for you and you want to support them, do it. Fantastic. I love the fact that we have friendly local gaming stores that are willing to work with people and to, uh, to order games for them and to have a good stock. And you should support them because the main purpose of a friendly local gaming store is for people to come and congregate and meet and be able to play games, but it costs money to keep the lights on and to have AC and uh, to keep the place running. So they need to be supported some way, somehow. And of course, most gaming stores make all their money through Magic cards and Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh and all of that, especially Magic. But yeah, if you can throw a little something their way and buy games, fantastic and do it. If you don't want to do that or you can't do it, but even if you just don't want to, then don't feel compelled to do so. 
okay? I don't think there's anything wrong with bargain hunting for board games because board games are expensive. I don't get a lot of games sent to me, trust me. The tiniest fraction of games that I get in review are from publishers sent to me for free uh, in order to get a review, okay? And I have to buy a ton of games. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not at that point yet where I'm getting a ton of games sent to me. So I know more than anyone how expensive games are. And I believe it or not, I do have a very limited budget. And if someone was going to give me a hard time for not buying MSRP price or spending MSRP price for a game, I would look at them like they were crazy because I can't buy that many games at those prices. I'm lucky enough that I live near a Cool Stuff Games down here in Florida where I can buy games dirt cheap, essentially, on their website and have them shipped for free to the store for me to pick up. Um, but even people that have to pay for shipping, it's still a better deal in most cases. Or at Amazon, those two kind of compete with prices. A lot of times they're kind of equal. Um, but do not feel bad about that because competition is a good thing. And I'm not trying to insult FLGS owners at all, but if you don't like the fact that you have to compete with these prices and you're mad at them, I would, and you can't make money selling board games anymore and only with magic cards, I would tell you to refocus your business. I would tell you to focus on the fact that people need a space to play and focus on that aspect. Focus on making your uh, store more habitable to people, cleaner, friendlier, more welcoming, uh, have better uh, spaces for people to play and more space, more tables. Uh, Offer food, offer drinks. Trust me, if people are going there to game for eight to 12 hours, they are gonna buy whatever food you have. So make it good. You know, maybe make it a little more expensive than the store that might be next door, or the convenience store, because you know what? People don't, people are more likely to buy food from you as long as it's good food. So you don't have to go out of business because of online retailers. You just need to refocus your business and people should not feel bad for bargain hunting and getting a better price because that's just the way that it is and board games are too expensive to be worrying about things like that so but that's a great question robin thanks keep them coming uh and then the final question we have is from joseph lynn who uh, comments on a lot of my videos really great comments joseph you're almost a stalker at this point but i appreciate stalkers <laughs> and he wants to know this is interesting um he wants to know if i was ever if the success of uh, Board Game Brawl continued and it got to be very successful, would I ever quit my day job and do it full time the way that some other board game reviewers do? Like uh, Tom does it for sure, Tom Vassal from the Dice Tower. Um, Rado does it, but Rado's retired, I think, so I don't know if that counts. And I'm not sure, I, I don't know if Joel Eady does it full time. Um, I know that uh, Rodney Smith from Watch, I think Rodney Smith from Watch and Play does it full time. He certainly has enough output that I wouldn't be surprised. Um. First off, this is totally wishful thinking. I don't think that, that I don't think I'm anywhere close to that. I'm very, very proud of what I've accomplished here at Board Game Brawl. In only just over a year, I've gotten almost 5,000 subscribers, which is an, I don't know if it speaks more to uh, people really being into my channel or because I had promotion through the Dice Tower as a freelance contributor or because board games in general are just so hot right now and like a rising tide floats all boats. Uh, but anyways, I'm very proud of what I've accomplished. I don't know how... I don't know what it's going to be like in a year. I don't know if I'm going to double my subscribers, triple my subscribers, if it's just going to stay on pace. Um, I don't know if I'm ever going to get to the point where I'm going to be able to do it full time because that takes a lot. And I don't know that I'm ready for that level of popularity, even within our own small community of board gamers. Um, it's a kind of intimidating prospect for me. Of course, ideally, I'd love to do it, but who knows? I, it's hard for me to predict the future. The number one thing is I want to have fun. Okay, it can be a lot of work to do this sometimes, but I still do it because of the fun factor. I make the tiniest smidgen of money doing this and get the tiniest smidgen of free games. Not enough for the amount of stress that it, this uh, is all about, if that's all I was doing it for. No, I do it because it's fun. If it ever stopped being fun for me, I wouldn't do it. Would it still be fun for me if it was my full-time job? Am I that into board games? Probably. But as it is right now, I've got things in a decent balance. It is pretty stressful to juggle this with work, but I happen to have a pretty cool job right now, probably the best job I've had within my field of printing and marketing. So we'll see what happens. I would say, Joseph, 
check back with me in a year and let's see what's going to happen then. Definitely, I, I mean, even if my channel stays really, really popular in a year, I wouldn't be doing this full time then, but maybe I'll have a better answer for you of what the future might hold. Okay, so this has still gone on way too long, but uh, thank you so much for your questions. Please keep them coming. I need more questions. Support us on Patreon. Support Extra Life Charity for our 24-hour gaming marathon. And uh, remember the Machi Koro contest. Email me. Get your entry in. Name three anime series. I've had to pick it on my shirts and get an extra entry. That's it. I'm out. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Nick. This has been Board Game Raw. And I'm reminding you to get out there and game every day in every way. Take care.